What's going on guys? It's your boy Andy from Vex Pro Audio coming at you real quick. So this is either going to be one really long video or it's going to be multiple videos. Uh, this video is going to be real simple. It's going to be hopefully the entire length video will be on our YouTube. Check that out. Vex Pro Audio. Make sure and subscribe and like. Um, but this video is going to showcase the bits that we have on VexProAudio.com and how would you use them in fabricating something and bear with me i'm going to try to figure this out as i go not too sure how it's going to turn out but it should be a really good video i'm going to make a panel it's i mean it's of this shape right but we're going to do some trickery some trickery uh it's going to include a baffle which is your mounting it's going to include a grill it's going to include some cutouts or some speakers whether it's some tweeters and mid-range or whatever it is, it's gonna include our bendy. And most importantly, it's gonna include our all the bits that we have on our site. And it's gonna show you just a brief uh, description on how they're used in the custom car audio game. So hopefully this video turns out to be something, right? So uh, we're starting off real simple. Uh, back in the day, I never had templates. Now I do, so I'm going to use it. It's just that simple. Uh, we're going to start out with a piece of three-quarter inch birch as our baffle mounting. And we're going to transition over to the grill, which is going to be a piece of half-inch MDF, which is going to allow us to show our chamfer bit, uh, multiple stacking of templates for our quad bearing bit, um, and how we go along doing this. So hopefully this video is you know, it helps someone. Uh, I see a lot of guys in the industry learning, up and coming, doing a lot of things, not wrong, but doing a lot of things without the right knowledge. And if this can help someone, so be it. Uh, it's gonna show you a couple of tricks, a couple of techniques. Uh, a lot of people are gonna probably say, hey, no, but da, da. that's cool, that's your way. This is my way. And it's just that simple. Stay tuned, check me out. And till the next video yeah so we're gonna start out with a piece of three-quarter inch like I said that's gonna be our baffle as you can see I traced our template on there it's a lot of steps I see a lot of guys skipping which is called a rough cutting I see them stick their template right on there boom and they jump into the route a bit and then you see a bunch of smoke flying listen you spend money on your tools take care of them it takes literally a minute or two to rough cut this with a jigsaw. Please do. All right, so we just rough cut that. Boom, don't gotta be perfect, but you just wanna get really close to your line, depending on the size or the diameter of the router bit that you're using. Now my little input, is you never want your router bit completely surrounded by material. That's just my thing. I try to go where the router bit is cutting the material only on one side where you're following that template and there's no material on the other side of the bit. Just saves the bit. So we got the three quarter inch in this application ready for your baffle, your base. You know, this is, you know, might be a rare deck you know, might, might be just a side wall. It doesn't matter. You'll see how it turns out. We'll put some holes in here for some speakers or something. We'll figure it out. Stay tuned. Now we're going to make, actually don't stay tuned. Listen to me. Now we're going to make the exact same thing out of our grill material. I like half inch MDF. Depending on the application, you use whatever you got to use, but let's do half inch MDF. All right, so we started out with this guy, our template. The only thing we're using from this is the outside shape. And we ended up with our baffle, our mounting plate, three quarter inch, and our soon to be grill, finisher, whatever you want to call it, half inch MDF. Oh yeah, I like my cutting. Damn, I'm crazy with that jigsaw, aren't I? Come on, man. Stick with it. We'll be back. 
All right, so what do we do now? We grab a template tape. Just remember, everything in this video except the wood and the templates are gonna be on fexproaudio.com. Grab your template tape. This happens to be three quarter. Figure out the width of the thinnest part of your template material that you're using. Grab the tape. Obviously, we could use some one inch here. Probably grab a roll throughout this video just to save up on the three quarter. And most importantly, grab your red dot knife. Let me show y'all something about this red dot. That's what I love. See that point? See, it's not a point. Let's take out the back and let's make a new point. The back has a little slot. Line it up, snap it off. Ooh, we got a point now. Just be careful with this thing. Cause some serious damage. So yeah, let's get this thing taped up so we can throw it on the CNC, oh, sorry, I mean router. Yep, that's what we're gonna do, router table. So in that last video, I used two things. Three quarter inch template tip, red dot knife. See how easy that red dot knife made it for lifting this up? The protective whatever on the two sided tape. Yep. So now next step, we're gonna router this. No CNC. Yep. So now, just for the purpose of this video, I'm only gonna use one bit, and that is the quad bearing quarter inch spiral bit. So my router lifts, well my routers, except half inch port cable, but there's this collet adapter that allows you to put a quarter inch bit on. Usually on three quarter inch birch, I would use a half inch bit, but just for this video, because we want to use this one bit that's available on vexproaudio.com. Yeah, uh, to do what we're doing. You guys will see why. Stay tuned. All right, so our bit's loaded. Our template is stuck down to a three quarter inch birch with two-sided template tape, and we're ready to go. Little helper, we're good to go. All right, so made a bunch of sawdust, and we've got a nice, clean cut. So now that we have our baffle mounting plate, yeah, we're gonna make our grill, to, uh, finisher, whatever you wanna call it. Make it now, not later, now. All right, come here, come here, come here. Let me tell you something. This stuff is cheap. What's not cheap is your material. Two-sided tape, template tape, cheap. Don't be cheap when putting it on. Don't do that. Just, just, let's skip the short talk. Oh, bro, it, 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 we use too much tape. That, my customer, no. Get customers that are willing to pay then. Sorry, sorry. But just put the shit on. Put, and I missed the spot. I screwed up. But put it on properly. Because your material ain't cheap. Your time ain't cheap. It's, it's just not. Put enough tape on there, stick it down properly. Y'all saw me in that quick video, walk all over it, do whatever you gotta do. When it slips, and if you're not using one of those, and it's these, yeah, that, that's not good. Not good. Don't be cheap. All right, so, so far you guys have seen the template tape, the red dot knife, and the quad bearing spiral quarter inch flush trim bit. But what's this? Ultimate pry tool. Yep. Ultimate pry tool. 
So you need to get your template off of your material. What do you do? No. Don't do that. Buy a damn pry tool. All right. Get under there. Start popping it up. All right. Easy. Easy. Take it easy. Ooh, are you in a rush? Where are you going? Take it easy. That's all. All right. That's it. Ultimate pry tool, man. Just remember, so far, if y'all don't remember, everything in this video so far, except the material. Nextproaudio.com. What are we gonna do next? I don't know. Y'all gotta continue watching. Cause I really don't know. All right. So, after it's all said and done, what are you left with? You're left with two identical pieces, one in three quarter. Again, this is just my choice of material. And one in half inch MDF, three quarter inch birch. So, like I said before, this particular project, three quarter is my baffle, my base, my mounting plate. Half inch MDF is gonna be what I make the finisher out of, the grill. So what do we do next? Put this aside. I don't need it. What do we need? Need this. So let's just say you're putting some speakers on this thing, right? Wanna lay it out now, right? That's what we wanna do. Wanna get this laid out where our speakers are going or where our crossovers or whatever that you're making this for, switches, anything. Now remember this just, it's just a size. You can make this smaller, you can make it larger, you can do anything with this. What are we doing with this? Let's make it for some speakers, right? Let's lay it out. All right, so we got those panels, right? We have them? Yeah, we got them. So what I like to do is I always like to start out with a center. Uh, keep things nice and clean. See that? See that line? See that line? Yeah. So let's just pretend that we're putting speakers on this thing like we said, right? So what you need to do is find out the outside diameter and the cutout diameter of your speakers that you're installing. So I got three different sizes here. I have a lot of these things kicking around for various speakers. Just makes life a hell of a lot easier to have them. Especially when you only deal with certain brands, works out great. Stick it on there, router it out, you're good to go. I never gotta worry about anything. So, let's just make believe here, right? Let's make believe this is a eight. Let's make believe this is a six and a half. And let's make believe this is a super tweeter. And we're gonna lay it out. Let's put a couple of eights, six and a halfs, and uh, Super tweeters on here. Yeah. All right. So, we got our panel. Lay it out. So, in imaginary land, make believe land, we got two eights, two six and a halfs, and two tweets. So now what do we do? We take the jigsaw and go at it? Yes, we do. But that's not your final cut. You take your jigsaw, you go at it, you rough cut it, then you take the same templates. Of course I grabbed the wrong ones. Take your same templates, then you take that two-sided tape, and then you stick it down, and then you flush trim everything. Perfect. No, no jigsaw, Mark. No, no, we don't. No, 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 no. Yeah, so this is the part everyone hates. Believe it or not, I hate it as well. It's got to be a better way. It's called a damn CNC, and we don't have one. So that's how you do it old school. So what do we do now? Bunch of rough cutting. Bunch of sticking on, sticking, routering, sticking on, sticking, routering. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah.
All right, so we got our panel on a rough cut, ready to go. So this is where having multiple size template tape comes in real handy, really handy, really, really handy. So see the thickness of that? See the thickness of that? See the thickness of that? Sure. No problem. You can use your three quarter inch, which is very common, and stick them on. Then take your red dot knife and trim off where it sticks out of the circle. You can do that, but we can save some time. We can have the half inch, or believe it or not, even the quarter inch in our arsenal, you can. It's not that bad, because it saves you a ton of time, and time is money. So, let's get these stuck down and continue working. All right, so we got our eight, our six and a half, and our tweeter laid out. Got our templates stuck down. Another little trick I like to do. My roller for my sound deadener on these smaller pieces, just to make sure I got a good solid bite from the tape. I like to roll it in. Doesn't hurt. This way, you know for a fact, even though I walk all over the panel, literally, you know for a fact, you got a good bite, all right? All right, so you saw me router out one of each. You also saw me use the first piece of tape I pulled up. I used it as an assistant to pull up the rest of the pieces of tape. That's another little trick. The next little time lapse I'm gonna do is you're gonna see how helpful this little guy is when dealing with template tape. Not only will it you know, help you get off the protective paper efficiently, um, it's going to help you. Check this out. All right, so you just saw how versatile and how needed this little red dot knife is, right? You saw me put down the two-sided tape. Obviously, it was sticking past the outside of this where your router bit's going to catch it. And let's just face it, we don't want tape residue and tape all of our out of it. So that's just how easy it is, you know? You just trim it off and then use it as well to pull the protective film, protective paper, actually, right off of your two-sided tape. Imagine you trying to do that with your nails over and over and over. What would happen after you do about 100 pieces? You're gonna be hurting. Whether it's your thumb or your pointer or whatever. You're gonna be hurting, hurting. So, next step, just like you guys saw before, is to router these out with our quad bearing spiral flush trim bit. And again, this is just a step I like to do. A little insurance. Little reassurance, I guess. I know it's down there, it's stuck. Ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I'll keep watching, keep watching. I know it's long, keep watching. I'm tired. All right, so what do we have now? We still have our half inch MDF grill finisher, whatever you want to call it. And we have our three quarter inch material, birch. That's gonna be our baffle, our base, our mounting plate, whatever you wanna call it. What are we doing next? I don't know, to be honest, I'm just winging this. But just remember, everything we've used so far, minus the material, is on VexProAudio.com. It's true. Don't believe me? Check it out for yourself. 
All right, so now that we have our grill finisher and our baffle done, we got a couple of things to do. We got to get some of our bendy on there. And we got to do a layout on here. Yep. Not sure what it's going to look like yet. So let's start brainstorming, right? Yep. Brainstorm time. What the? Uh, it's something. It's something. Yeah. Check this out. All right, so I know it's a lot. It is a lot. Um, so basically all I did was I started out with the original template. I had some other sizes, played around with it, got a design. Back to the old school way, sticks. Cut up a couple of sticks. That's gonna give me what shape I'm looking for. And good old pencil and an eraser. I mean, that's just how it goes. If you want nice things, something different, then you gotta take common templates and just get creative with it, you know? It's a lot of work, it's a lot of work, and I know I'm gonna hear, oh, no. Listen, your work that's out there is your creativity. So don't be afraid to get crazy with it, you know, Draw it out, see what it looks like, erase it, draw it out again. It takes time. And I know some, you know, some people are gonna say, oh, uh, customer's not paying for that. This is how you build your portfolio. This is how you build who you are. This is how you build what you're known for. All right, this, this is just what it takes. So I'm gonna do some erasing and see if I like it. And guess what, if I don't like it, Gonna draw it over again. Stay tuned. All right, so after doing some erasing, darkening up some lines, seeing exactly what this is gonna look like, I kinda like it. Yep, I kinda like it. So let's just do something like this. So it's a lot easier to understand. And then we get to do our favorite part once again. Good old rough cutting. So let's just do this quickly. I should have done this before recording because me scribbling on a piece of wood just isn't appealing. All right. So everywhere that's got a scribble, that's gonna be cut out. So some people may ask, Vex, uh, isn't that corner gonna be really tight to wrap? It's a good question. Or this corner, or this corner. It would have been if you were cutting this with a jigsaw, because then you would have a really tight angle in there. But you're not. You're cutting this with a round route of it. Round? Yep. So it's going to have a little contour to it. Nothing much, but just enough for you to be able to get your hands in there and do what you got to do with your final material. What y'all think? I think we up to something. So let's get the rough cutting. The part we all love to do. Yeah. Got a rough cut. Got a rough cut. I'm, I'm not killing my, my bits. Um, makes life a heck of a lot easier. Let's get it.
All right, here we have it. All stuck down with the two-sided tape and ready to be routed. Now here's the trick. We have multiple levels here that the bearing needs to run on. We've got a lower level, then an upper level. So instead of doing this in multiple stick downs and passes, with this bit, we can do it all in one. And that was the importance of using this one bit with the quad bearings. So let's get it lined up and routed out. Now, just to let you guys know, these only have but so much surface area to push against. So you're definitely gonna wanna be careful when routering these sections. Matter of fact, you always wanna be careful because let's just face it, it is only two-sided tape. And that's why you guys saw me go so crazy every single time with my roller. Make sure we got a good hold on it, you know? Let's get it routed, fingers crossed. All right, I don't care how many times you do this. If you're in like this, when you're trying to do these little things, man, you the man, jeez. But yeah, let's just remember, there's two different layers of templates that this bearings had to ride on. That's the importance of that quad bearing bit. I was able to catch the base template and the second layer template all in one cutting session. Before, you'd have to draw it out, rough cut it, stick down your first layer, stop on all the corners where the second layer meets the base layer. See that gap? Not with that quad bearing. Oh yeah, let's get this thing with the ultimate pry tool. Let's get it all opened up and see what it looks like. Oh, we know what it looks like. Come on, let's not fool ourselves. Yeah. Let's take a peek. And there you go. We got our grill, our finisher, our baffle, put them on there, bang. So let's recap, let's do a little recap. So far, and all available on our site. FixProAudio.com. We use a quad spiral flush trim bit. Yep, cut through three quarter inch birch butter. Half inch MDF. Y'all saw it. Butter. Red dot knife. Help take off the protective paper help cut when you had excess tape sticking out past your templates because you don't want that on your bit. Ultimate pry tool and the variety of two-sided tape from quarter inch, half inch, three quarter, and one inch. Yep, all of those items so far that we've used except the wood and the templates are on vexpoaudio.com. Yep. Remember we were talking about 
being able to wrap this because the corners are too tight. They are tight. Don't get me wrong. This ain't going to be for the regular wrap guy, but check it out. See how they're rounded? See a little round? That's because the bit's quarter inch and it's round. It ain't square. But yeah, let's get some bendy on this. Let's make this into something. That's what we're going to do. See y'all soon. All right. So here we go. What time is it? Time to get some of that bendy on our panel. A couple of things I like to do. Box of bendy on our site, vexprodeo.com. This stuff is Italian bendy. Don't try this with the other bendy that's on the market, but this stuff you can soak in water. I got a little bucket. I put some warm water in it and I soaked it for half hour. Then I just took my microfiber, dried it up. Works a hell of a lot better on making sure you get nice, tight curves. Keep that trick. Also something I like to do, I like to use a little glue. Yep, you'll see. So you grab yourself a little chip brush and you glue it on as well. Now, these are not your regular staplers. These are 22 gauge upholstery staplers. Let's get in here. See how thin those staples are? Upholstery stapler. I have both of them. Regular short shank, short nose, yeah. long nose, depending on the application. I got both of them. So let's get some bendy onto our panel. Another thing I like to do, as you can see, I already cut my bendy to size. These are inch and five eighths. And why did I do that measurement? Well, we got three quarter inch material on the bottom as our baffle, my mounting plate. We got half inch as our finisher, our grill. And usually the thickness of the basket of a speaker around quarter inch. So what I did, put a couple of strips of quarter inch that I used. You guys saw I used this to make the grill just as a spacer and then I added a little bit extra for what why would I do that simple when you wrap your grill that material goes over if it sits on top of that speaker the rim of the speaker it's gonna bump it out so I added a little bit now on a lot of my grills I wrap it out the back section but that's for another part of the video so the material has somewhere to go Inch and five eighths, let's get it on there. <clears throat> All right, and here you have it. All bendied out. Box of Bendy, VexProdeo.com. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. No gaps. No wiggly wobblies. Nope. So what I usually like to do, now that, see if I could do this. All right. Yep. I can do it. I can flip the camera. Little goals in life, you know. Ah. Uh, so, first and foremost, I hope you guys are still watching, because this is one heck of a long video, huh? Yep, but, all right, so you guys saw everything I did up to now, and first and foremost, thank you. Thank you for hanging in there if you're still watching. Um, that so far is your finished project. Uh, so you guys, like I explained, I uh, wet the bendy, soaked it a little bit just to be able to uh, get that curve absolutely perfect. Yeah, it's, it's th these type of things, it's all in, all in your groundwork, all in your groundwork. If, if you're not willing to do the groundwork, these panels will not come out right. They just, they won't come out right. Um, so 
What I usually like to do now is leave it, leave it alone. I got the grill, the finisher in here. Uh, I got the bendy glued and stapled to the base, the baffle. I like to leave it in here and I like to uh, let it dry. Let, let, let it take its course and let it, let the bendy dry. Um, so usually when I'm building a project or something like that, what I like to do is bendy last, you know, right before the night. And uh, I build out all my templates and my baffles and do all my woodwork and I like to bendy at night. So this way I'll just leave them just like this overnight. Gives the time some, you know, gives the bendy some time to dry. And uh, you, the next morning when you start work, it's nice finished, you know, nice dry, ready to go. Ready to go for your next step. Um, so our next step on this is, uh, believe it or not, doing a little bit more work to the grill. I'm not gonna leave it like that. Do a little bit more work to it. Uh, a lot of little things that go a long way, I guess we could say, yeah. A lot of little, little details that go a long way when it comes to your next step. You know, whether this is going on a rear deck at an angle or whatever, and you're gonna stretch your super stretchable fabrication fleece from the end, just little things like that. Um, but yeah, thanks for you guys sticking with me this far and we'll continue once this dries up. That's what's gonna happen next. It's gonna dry up and we're gonna do some little trickery to the grill. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. Um, looking at it in my head now, trying to figure out what I wanna do to it. Uh, as far as, and I'll give you guys a brief jump on it. Ooh, almost caught myself in the eye with that little piece. That's why you should be wearing safety glasses. I'm just pulling these off because, I don't know. Um, trying to figure in my head, uh, where do I want to round over? Where do I want the round look? Where do I want the chamfer, the 45 degree chamfer look? Just trying to figure all that out in my head. Like I said, this is not a panel for anyone. This is no, this is not built for anything in particular. This was just to be able to do a video for you guys and hopefully uh, it's appreciated and it helps out someone. But that's where we are as of right now. We're just gonna, like watching paint dry? Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. But that's gonna be it for, for today. On this, I'm gonna jump back on it tomorrow once it's dried, and then I'll uh, go from there. I can probably do some trickery to it now, seeing that it's not for anyone or any particular project. If the bendy doesn't dry perfect, I mean, who will it really harm? I don't know, I'll see. But yeah, uh, thanks for sticking in so far. Thanksproaudio.com. Catch y'all in the next one. All right. So let's talk about what we're gonna do to this grill, the finisher. So we'll talk about two different bits here. Most importantly, let's talk about this bit. So this is a 45 degree chamfer bit. But this is known as the small. And what this will do is it will chamfer at a 45 degree angle up to 5 eighths so from the bearing to the end of the cutter up to 5 eighths so in this new era of car audio that's been taking over lately um we have a lot of crazy door panels and side walls and stunt walls and whatnot center consoles and 99 percent of those the grills that finisher that you see is half inch MDF. And the edge finish that you end up seeing is a 45. Now this bit takes all the science out of it because you'd go to a big box store and you pick up a 45 degree chamfer bit, but you don't know what thickness of material that bit's capable of doing. So you don't know how nice of a chamfer you're gonna end up getting. So that's why we carry this one. Okay, it's available on vexproaudio.com. It's called the 45 degree chamfer, small. So we're gonna be using this for some of our edge finish. And then this is not on the site as yet. We're working on something with this. This is what you call 
a mini round over bit. Tiny little sucker. Quarter inch shank. Tiny little one. This we're also going to be using, and I'm thinking, we'll see how it turns out, only on the inside of this center design. So from here to here, here to here. Just on the inside pieces of this, we're going to just break that edge. So once this is wrapped in vinyl, it looks nice, clean. No sharp edges, <clears throat> none of that. And then on all the outside stuff, we're gonna 45 degree it. So let's see how that works out. Let's check it out, let's try it. All right, so you guys saw me using a few different bits there. I explained to you about the uh, small chamfer and then the mini round over to get that look that we wanted. And then what do we do after that, right? Well, let's just face it. The transition from the rounds to the 45s and whatnot, they're never gonna be perfect. It's just not gonna happen. What do you do? That's all. Nothing crazy. We're not here sanding for an hour. Couple of little spots. We had to touch it up. Make sure it looked right. Y'all wanna see it? Let's check it out. Ooh. Oh, baby. Perfect. So, the next thing we need to do is we need to gap it because no spit. Not your buddy across the street. Kick it. No. The grill's going to fit nice. Re real nice. After it's all wrapped. So, I'm going to let this sit because I popped it out in order to do the chamfering in the round, round over. I'm going to let this sit overnight, let it dry properly. The gapping literally takes not even five minutes. That bit, that CPR bit to gap, mm -hmm. xproaudio.com, we got them. Yeah. You're gonna see the magic of it tomorrow. But y'all gonna see it all in one, but it's gonna be tomorrow for me. Yep. I gotta take a look at this thing again. Whew. Ooh. Ooh. Damn. But yeah, hang in there. We're almost done. Almost. All right. Now we have a perfectly dried panel. Look at that curve. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So what are we going to do next? <clears throat> we are going to gap it. Yep, that's what we're going to do. We're going to gap it. With the gap bit. CPR. Gap bit. One bit that does it all. 
it'll make sure once this panel is wrapped with vinyl, it'll make sure that the grill sits in perfectly. No spit, neighbor, he's not gonna come running, kick it, no, none of that. CPR gap bit, the, oh, 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 available, fexproaudio.com. Let's gap it. All right, and there we go. A perfectly gapped panel. So now, once you do whatever you're doing with this panel, it's all nice and pretty and finished, and you drop it off or you wrap it yourself with vinyl, you have the gap to accommodate the vinyl and the grill will fit nice and snug like it's supposed to. So that's gonna conclude our time together. Now this video is super long. Yep, super long. But I hope it helps someone and I hope I didn't forget anything. And please leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Yep. Like I said, keep pushing, get creative, build some shit. It's simple, really simple. Invest a couple of bucks into some tools and get creative. Just remember everything that we've used except the templates and the actual material is on vexproaudio.com. You got any questions, reach out to me. I'm always willing to help. So I greatly appreciate everyone hanging in there and watching this. Hopefully it helps someone even if it helped one person in a world full of millions and billions, it's still a plus. Once again, thank you. It's your boy Andy from Vex Pro Audio. Signing out.